Hey everyone, it is 90 Day Fiance, before the 90 days, our lips are sealed, season 4, episode 5, I hope you're staying safe and healthy wherever you are, um, and practicing good, whatever, I guess not hygiene is the word. Anyway, John is having a problem with the show. It's, it's awful and I hate it. Okay, tell me why. Because it's just like, liars be lying, and then they get all confused about why... When they, like... You feel bad everybody. for the people. I do. I mean, like, they're okay. all... If they're not dissolution, they're... Stuck with some crazy person. Mm -hmm. So, um, so basically, John it's just is... Sad. John is a nice sweetheart, and he's finding this show difficult. Now, I looked it up. It looks like um, they're paid, at least. So someone like Rose is probably... This is real windfall for her. Uh, so anyway, but I, I'm enjoying it. I feel like, you know, I was young and I, I wish I had gotten at least paid for all my heartbreak, all my terrible decisions. And like, every time I got, got dumped by some loser or someone was like, well, at least here's your check. And I'd be like, oh, that's, that's a little, that'll help. Um, okay, so, yes, this so is... So you wish you were a prostitute? No, that is not even close to how that works. I'm talking about dating, because I've dated a lot. John, that is a terrible <laughs> joke. And we will be discussing this off camera later. Um, okay, so let's go with the obvious ones. Yolanda and Williams. I don't really understand. She um, still thinks that there's a, and he's a like, real oh, person. I don't know how that happened. I don't understand. I'm wondering if he like sold the Instagram account and the new guys like or gal or whoever is like, okay, I'll try I'll see if I can't get some money out of this. I'm willing to keep trying. I don't know anything about how these kind of scams work, so I don't understand if there's like a network of people who share resources. Like a lot of scammers do, they have forums, they sell accounts, stuff like that. So I don't know if that's the case. I don't really know. It looks like this has all been filmed within 48 hours. So I'm like, how can she still believe it? Then she's like, oh last night. I'm like, okay, so she's still in shock. David and his imaginary girlfriend, where he's like, he goes to a jewelry store. He's like, I want to buy an engagement ring, and the guy's like, Oh, that sounds that sounds great. What you know, what's going on? And he's like, It's for my girlfriend, who I've never met over seven years. And you can see the jeweler go, Okay. Money's money. My mother-in-law is watching. Just to be clear, my mother-in-law is watching the toddler. He's not just down there running wild and screaming. He has adult supervision. We hope. Man, yeah, I mean, you know. She's okay. Um, anyway, then he's like, oh, but I don't necessarily trust her, so I'm going to get something nice like a cubic zirconia. And the guy's like, oh, okay, great. Total, he meets his friend Anya. This is going to end badly. There's no way a real person shows up. Of course it's going to end badly. Um, anyway, um, so then we have Ed and R Rose, Usman and Lisa, Ash, Ash and Avery, Steph and Erica, Jeffrey and Bart. So I guess we got a lot going on. Let's get Ash and Avery out of the way. Ash. Crazy eye ass. Yeah, I did not notice. You said you noticed, but I did not notice how often. You're not supposed to see the white all the way around someone's eyes. I remember the first time someone pointed that out to me was a lady that um, I knew from archery and she married the Eiffel Tower. Like, I'm not, that's not like... She She's not exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating. You can Google it. There's a whole documentary on one of those, like, strange love BBC shows. You can look up married the Eiffel Tower. She literally married the Eiffel Tower. She changed her last name. And, yeah, she has some mental dis issues. She nuts. Anyway, and since then I've noticed that, yeah, when people's eyes, when you see the white all the way around them, that's a real concerning thing. That's, like, one of those... Primal, primal things that people do when they're and people will do it when they like rant or rave or they have raging problems it'll come out and so I was like oh and then I was then we like saw the older brother and the dynamic made a lot of sense because the old it's like Ash is trying to be like his older brother but is like not a good copy anyway so I didn't know I when they said that the I thought the brother was at the Airbnb no, Ash and Avery are at Airbnb, and the brothers at home. Um, so, and this is, I think, something that people get wrong when we talk about. There's not a spectrum of good to bad. There's a lot of different ways. You can have. What do you mean? What do you mean? Well, I just mean like it's not like it's one person's good and everything, and they're bad and other thing. It you can be have two bad people and each be making the other worse. So, like when the brother's like, I'm concerned that she's like making you drink. 
or encouraging you to drink. It's not like you go, oh, she's the good person, he's the bad person. They can be a bad match or they can both be influenced in a bad way. I think he's a little slimy and slick and kind of deceiving her about things. And I think she's not necessarily, you know, like encouraging him to drink. And I thought she wanted to drink first thing in the morning. And I am all about mimosa. But, you know, if I was with someone who didn't drink, I could give up drinking. You know, it's not a big deal. If I, would, if I had a partner that had a problem with it or, with, I mean, I gave it up just fine when we were pregnant. I mean, we. We weren't pregnant. Pretty sure I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely weren't. But uh, anyway, my point is, so they go to meet with the brother, and I'm like, wow, has Ash always had crazy eyes? And then he's like, what about my brother's son? And she's like, oh, well, he's assured me that the ex-wife will be just fine with the baby, you know, with the son coming to live. And the brother does this. <laughs> and it's like sending mental, mental signals to brother that this is not okay, like this is a problem. And the brothers, and Ash is like this. Well, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Smooth talking Ash. Oh. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So, th there, Stephanie and Erica, neither have told their parents that they're gay or bisexual. And, they know. And it's like, maybe, maybe, maybe you should do that before you go on national TV. Anyway, um... Uh, all of Erica's friends find it concerning that Steph is coming over after four months. Um, oh, I, I got her. Sorry. And that's it. And they meet and they cuddle. But then it's all this like, oh, she's really into sex and I don't know if I'm ready. And I'm like, you know, it would be a great time to have that conversation. Any time when you were sexting in the last four months. You know, it just it's just weird to me. It's like maybe talk. If you're in love... I would rather tell John almost anything than I would a per stranger production company. And it seems like, now of course we've been together for, I don't know, five billion centuries. So, uh, but it just is like, uh, yeah, I mean these are clearly not the healthiest things. Usman and Lisa, he lies about what the producer is saying. The US, she claims that US videos never use models, which is such a huge lie. We just, I mean they all do. In fact, a majority of all female actresses at one point were in a music video. She's high maintenance, like she's some 22-year-old supermodel, and she ain't. Well, it's just weird to me because it's like they've been they've been dating online for this long, and this has been a problem they all, all the way through. So at some point you go, you know, you're either in this lifestyle or you're not. Um, anyway, I don't even want to deal with them. So Jeffrey and Varya. So, so you pointed out uh, all this stuff about, you know, um, him and his troubling past. So I watched a movie, uh, sorry, I watched a YouTube video by Legal Eagle, which talks about the 90, before the 90 days, the U.S. has a law that actually is meant to protect people from things like sex slavery and American citizens. So there's a lot of rules about both. So your partner to get a K-1 visa out of the country can't have any history of prostitution. I think you guys know that because you've seen the show before and it's been brought up in the normal season. That was new to me. But another one, and I don't know how common this is to know, is that before the partner out of the country can come in, they you have to have a background check done on the person in America. And they cannot get a K-1 visa for their partner if they have certain things like sex trafficking, um, domestic violence, um, and they have to release this... Um, their, their background check to their partner. So this whole, like, he's not going to tell her about what's going on with his ex-wife or his felony conviction is not going to fly for very long because it has to come out when they apply for this K-1 visa. So, um... I like how he grills her about everything and then gets upset when he gets grilled yeah, about stuff. And it's like, yeah. Hey, well, and it just shows that they don't, they don't, like, for all of his, like, I'm not concerned she's having a green card, he really thinks that he's offering her this great thing and she should be so grateful. Like, he came and wants to get engaged, but he's surprised that she wants to get engaged. Like, oh, well, she's looking for something and she wants to get engaged. It's like, well, no, if you're in a partnership, you, it's normal and healthy for both partners to be in at the same degree. So he wants to go and get engaged the fact that she's saving up money because she wants to get engaged is called a normal relationship, right? Like, like when you see I guess people, not if you're a felon hiding everything. Yeah, and so, 
he's just being a real dick, you know, he's like, I just, I, I, you know, he wakes up, he's like, oh, this apartment's terrible. And it's just like, okay, is that what you would say to your partner you in the U.S.? You know what US? else is terrible? Having a felony conviction for drug dealing. Yeah, it's or, or having an outstanding... And then not talking about it. Having oh. domestic violence with his ex-wife. Again, and, terrible. Well, I mean, so... Oh so he, and he's like he met he's all mad that she talked to an American before now I admit he can be mad about her lying but it doesn't seem like he's as mad about her lying as it is the fact that she dated he met her on an international dating site John and I met on eHarmony that would be like if he's like so did you go on a date before I just want to make sure I'm the first guy that you dated it's like you know and it's the same thing we see with Ed and Rose. So he's really concerned. So this is what, so he had this whole big thing with her about how he asked her about Facebook and he's like, oh, she's being so evasive. I watched the conversation and I went, I don't think she's being evasive. And he's like, oh, she lied. It's almost as if liars see everyone else as lying to them. Yeah, like he's like, well, do, is your ex-boyfriend on, on your Facebook? And she's like, no. And then he, she eventually says, yes, he's on Facebook, but I blocked him. And he's like, oh, she lied. And I'm like, I didn't think that was a lie. I understood his question the same way she understood her question. So as a Native American speaker, I thought he was asking, are you friends with your exes on Facebook? And she said, no. And then it came out, well, she blocked them. But to me, that's even better. It's like, it's, it's just really super creepy because you know that he would not treat a woman in America this way or a woman his own age this way. He's treating her this way because he has expectations that she's supposed to be a certain way, which comes up when we get the STD test. How would you do that correctly, John? Hey, I got this. I took this test. And I was just wondering if you would and we could be on the same page and just make sure that we know what's going on. Right. That's oh. how you do it. That's Instead, he goes and he says, I want you to take this test. And she says, well, you should take the test too then. And he says, oh, no, I'm not going to take it here because he's concerned about... Because he's a douche. Well, he because he's he doesn't think it's safe to get done there, but he wants her to get it done there. But, yeah, I mean, the way you do it is you come in and you say, in America, this is something we do. And the second thing is, he is saying she, he wants her to tech, take the STD test to make sure she's not sleeping around. That is not how STD tests work. You could be in one committed relationship and get an STD. And you could be sleeping around and not have one. An STD test is not a sleeping around test. He knows that she's had sex before because she has a son. Was that how that works? I hate to tell you, but it does. But he seems to think that he she couldn't have got an STD from that. And secondly, when people get it in America, in a committed relationship, you're not getting it so that you can say, oh, you have an STD, well, out the door. The idea is that you can get treatment for it or take the necessary medical precautions so that it's not transmitted or something. It has nothing to do with her health. I mean, he's not genuinely concerned for his or her health. He thinks that if she has an STD, that means she's lying to him and to kick her out the door, which is not even how that test works. So, yeah, she has every right to be offended. And she didn't even really say no. She said, well, then we'll both go get one. And he was like, no. So, good for you. First of all, good for you, girl. Secondly, if she, you know, she's so offended that she's like, he just thinks I'm this easy girl. I mean, it does really seem like she should have some genuine concerns about sex trafficking because he does seem to really think that he is buying this girl he wants to make sure that she's clean so that he can bring her over there and boink her you know he's bringing he wants to get engaged but he doesn't seem to have any concern he for gets things. mad about her giving away 10 cents of his yeah i mean the only thing that makes me feel better is from what i googled on 90 day fiance the other way they do pay the people a very small amount <clears throat> but it looks like in the philippines it'd be a good amount of money um it's just so disrespectful. And you go, you ask the question, would he do this to, a, like, if he met a nice, pretty 50-year-old woman in the U.S., would he talk to her this way? Maybe, and maybe that's why he's single. But probably not. And the fact that he wouldn't treat a woman in the U.S. that's 50, and you go, well, yeah, but she doesn't want a green card. Well, he doesn't see her as a person. So, you know, I don't know where he gets all huffy about how she's going to, she might be using me for a green card when he treats her not even as a as another human being, but as a, you know, basically 
a woman to bring over and have treat him the way that he's decided he needs to be treated in all aspects. So it's a pretty, pretty upsetting show, but it looks like at least she's going to kind of get out of this, you know, and people go, well, it means that she won the green card. I think if she just wanted the green card, she would have put up with this shit. Done, done whatever was necessary. Anyway, that is the episode. I hope you're staying safe and sane. I hope my depression oh. makes for a good show.